Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today's topic is the fundamental group. Uh, maybe the most fundamental object in algebraic topology. Um, certainly a very important and relatively easy and powerful concept. I mean, the idea will explain how not to hang pictures on the wall, which is kind of my takeaway, uh, but uh, we'll have to wait for the last slide. First of all, let's get started with the main idea. What, why do we care about a fundamental group, something like a fundamental group? Well, the whole point about algebraic topology is that we would like to understand topology, but topology is hard. Topology is really, really hard. So what we really want to do is we want to associate a numerical invariant to our topological space. Might it be a number or something more sophisticated like a group or a vector space or whatever? So fundamental group, of course, would associate to a, or associates to a topological space, a group. And this group is an invariant of the topological space in the sense that if uh, two topological spaces are homotopy equivalent, then their fundamental groups are isomorphic as groups. So you could really think about it like, like a number that you associate to a, to a topological space and you want to check whether X and Y are the same. Um, and if your two numbers, uh, if you if, you, if you, the two numbers are different, the number for x and the number for y, you know they're not the same. Sadly, the other way around doesn't work. If x spits out five and y spits out five, then you can't tell. They might be the same. They might not be the same. That's just what it is. An invariant usually only works in one way. Namely, if it's different, then you know that those spaces are different. So in my example here, I have two obviously different topological spaces, X and Y, uh, a disk with a hole and a disk with two holes. Right? Question, are they equal up to homotopy? So our notion of equivalence in algebraic topology usually is homotopy. So are those two homotopic? Yeah, well, obviously not, right? I mean, come on, look at them. They can't be homotopic, obviously not. But how to prove that? That's usually a pain. I mean, for those two spaces, yeah, you can do that, but usually it's really, really painful to prove that something is not homotopic. What we would like to do is exactly what I said. We would like to assign to X a number five and to Y a number four. And we would like to say, oh, five is not four, not equal. So X is not equal to Y in, in whatever kind of sense we would like equal, uh, well, equal in whatever kind of sense. In, in usually, as I said, in algebraic topology, meaning homotopic. Um, well, numbers are very easy, of course, in variance, but sometimes they are too crude. Uh, so we don't really want to associate a number in for at least for the fundamental group, but something more sophisticated, as I said, a group. But basically, that's an, that's the idea of the whole idea of algebraic topology is that you associate to your topological space something in algebra that you can really tell whether A is equal to B um, by just easy algebra, right? Four is not equal to five, so X is not equal to Y. I said again, because it's important, if by accident, both spaces would spit out five, um, then I would be in trouble, then I couldn't tell. And then would I need to use maybe another invariant and maybe the other invariant gives me uh, whatever, three and two, and then I'm good again. So an invariant, a good invariant usually is not a complete invariant in the sense that you might end up that you get the same result and then you can't tell. The fundamental group will be of that type. Um, sometimes you get the same result and you just can't tell whether those two spaces are equivalent. But still, the converse still works if the fundamental groups are different and the fundamental groups of those two objects here are different, as we will see, then the two spaces are not homotopic. That's the whole idea. And I said again, not just the whole idea of um, uh, the fundamental group, but the whole idea of algebraic topology. If, you, if I would need to summarize it, that's the whole idea of algebraic topology. So let's have a look what the fundamental group actually is. So at this point, I should say I stole everything, not just from the book of Hatcher, which is linked in the description, but also from very various different sources, which are also all linked in the description. There's a very nice page illustrating the fundamental group uh, which I really highly recommend, as I said, linked in the description. Anyway, um, so let's say we have something easy like the circle. And it turns out that the, the circle is the one space you really want to compute the fundamental group. Uh, and then you can almost always use some sophisticated tools like well, Seifert and Fertkampen, whatever. 
But for now, let's just try to understand what the fundamental group is all about. So on a circle, I have 32 operations. Um, I can run around the circle in a clockwise fashion. This picture here, or not illustrated, I could run around the circle in a counterclockwise. This was also clockwise, counterclockwise fashion. This way. Um, and if you run around in the circle, uh, around the circle twice in the counterclockwise fashion, then it's the same as running around once and then running around again. So kind of run, running around, winding around the circle behaves like, well, the integers. Um, with, let's say, going in clockwise direction being the positive direction, going in counterclockwise direction being the negative direction. So this would be a minus one or whatever, depending how often you wind around. Which is not completely obvious, but also not so hard to see is if you would go around in a clockwise direction, and then in the counterclockwise direction, it's really like um, um, a, a plus one minus one. So it, it's like winding around, not at all. So actually this winding around along the circle is really just a group structure of C. What we would like to say is the fundamental group of the circle is Z, is the integers, given by the generator winding around uh, in either direction. It depends a bit whether you, you like plus one more or whether you like minus one more. And the main statement is that the fundamental group is for homotopy invariant. So whenever you see a space which has fundamental group different from Z, you know it's not the circle, right? That's the whole point. But for now, just, well, we observe that if you walk around, um, you actually get naturally a group structure. And that's the whole idea underlying the fundamental group. So let's have a look at the circle just slightly more um, stretched out. So this is also, of course, homotopy equivalent to the circle. Um, it's just fattened up if you want. And I have my base point here, which I call star. And as I said, if I go around, that corresponds to the generator R, uh, one and Z. If I go around and I go around, it corresponds to the generator one and Z. If I have those space with two holes and we are still interested in uh, distinguishing them, I have kind of two natural candidates to go around. I always want to start at my star and I want to go back to my star. I could go around one hole or I can go around the other hole. Uh, turns out, if I go around both holes at once, then um, if you go around both holes at once, then it's really just a combination up to homotopy, the, the common combination of going around either way. How can you see this? Well, if you go around here and let's say you push it out a little bit going around here and you start over again, then you can, of course, contract this part and you get exactly this picture. That's how you see that going around one and going around the other is the same as, it's a group structure. It's, it's the same as compos composing the two, going around one, going around the other. So the group of paths starting at my point that you can associate to this space is the integers. Well, the only thing you need to make sure uh, for this to work is that, well, going around, going around, going around is this winding number, going around the other way is the winding the other way. Um, going around like this, and then going around like this, if you think again in this pushing this out, so here's my star, and I can just take this bit and push it all the way around the hole. And actually this is trivial. So here's the hole, this is the space here. And the green one is my pass. So this pass is homotopy equivalent to the do nothing pass. And certainly the do nothing pass is kind of an identity. If you think about um, the group operation of stacking pass together, doing going one pass and then going the other pass, that's the composition. And that's why you always want to end up at the end this um, star point because then you can just naively compose them. Okay, if this is operation and you can basically pull in everything that doesn't go around um, the whole, and you know that rinding behaves like plus one or minus one, depending on uh, the, the orientation of your wind, um, then you have just verified that the fundamental group of paths in this space is equivalent to the integers. Similarly, you can check that the fundamental group of the paths associated to 
this two hole thing is the so called free group in two generators. In particular, it's not commutative. So we have a group that is not commutative, the red one, and you have a group that is commutative, the green one. So they can't be isomorphic. So you know if, uh, because the fundamental group is a, is a homo homotopy invariant, you know that the two spaces are different, right? Because of homotopy invariance. Let me make this a little bit more precise. So for a topological space, we fix this funny base point star, which usually doesn't play a huge role. Um, uh, give you an, an argument in a second why you basically can ignore the star. Anyway, and you take loops. What is a loop? A loop is just an, an embedding of the interval such that the endpoints are glued together. Right? This is just a loop. So an interval, you put it in your space X. So here's my space X. I take my interval. Uh, let's say my interval is red. So I take my interval and I put it in the space X such that the two endpoints are glued together. And the, the glued together point is exactly the star point I choose. And then this space of um, equivalence classes of loops, equivalence up to homotopy, we're doing algebraic topology, everything is up to homotopy, um, based at this point is actually a group. And the group structure is just given by concat concatenation. It's exactly this picture, concatenation, right? You can concatenate paths, you can just push them, pull them around, and you get a new paths. In particular, everything in this case, it doesn't wind around, I said again, wind around the hole, you can just you can just push it inwards. And this gives you a your group structure. Um, and the point is exactly the statement that you would just, in, just verify. If your two spaces are homotopy equivalent, then the groups are isomorphic. And note, I said again, this is only in this direction. So what you really can do with some invariant like the fundamental group is if they are not the same, you're kind of always using very confusing. You're always using um, the equivalent formulation, which is the error the other way around, but uh, negated. So if they are not equivalent, oh, this is a bad symbol. Anyway, you, you know what I mean. If they are not uh, equivalent, then the spaces weren't equivalent to begin with. You can't say anything about the case when they are equivalent. Anyway. So you have this fundamental group given by loops, by paths, uh, looping paths in your space up to concatenation. And um, in, in almost all of the videos in this series about algebraic topology, whenever I talk about the fundamental group, I kind of want to ignore the space point and it's not really important. And a lot of authors, including um, Hatcher and including myself, I'm not an author, but including myself, um, would just write, just ignore the base point. And the argument is pretty simple. So if you have two different base points, a star and uh, an asterisk, then you, you can kind of show that the homo and everything is reasonably past connected, whatever. Then you can show that the fundamental groups are isomorphic anyway, but just by um, flanking with the corresponding path between those two points, with a naive path between those two. So I kind of want to ignore this space point. Anyway, so now com comes my puzzle, my, <laughs> my, my funny puzzle, so fun. And of course, I stole this from a very nice um, paper linked in the description. It's a very classical puzzle. Uh, actually, surprisingly, not so classical. I think it, it's from the 90s, which is surprisingly recent um, for a notion like the fundamental group, which, which goes back to the 1890s. Or maybe even 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 further back. So I was talking about the 1990s, and it goes back to the 1890s. So it's quite a difference. Anyway, so it's basically the idea that you have the space um, with two holes, and you want to hang a picture, and here are the two holes, and you want to hang the picture in a way such that whenever you remove one of the, so whenever you would glue in, uh, let's say, one of the holes, the picture will fall from your wall. That would be a way not to hang a picture. Um, anyway, that, that's, that's the way it's called not to hang a picture. So this wouldn't work because if I would uh, remove this one, it, 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 it's still on the wall, right? It won't fall down. Funnily, this one works. Um, this is not so easy to see, but you can use the fundamental group actually to prove it. Because, uh, well, let's say you identify this bit here is just my star point. This is just my star point here. This is a bad star, but you get the point. So this is this point here. So this is identified. 
and then you have exactly you know that the free uh, that this is a free group. So you just need to construct a word in the free group, which is this one, uh, for using exactly the same generators x1 and x2 that I used here. So x1 goes around the left hole, x2 goes around the right hole. Um, in exactly this way, I go around the left hole. I go around the right hole in the, op uh, the right hole. I go around the left hole in the opposite order, uh, opposite winding. And I go around the right hole in the opposite winding, which is x1, x2, x1 inverse, x2 inverse. And um, removing one nail, so gluing in one disk in this, in this picture, is the same as identifying one generator as trivial. So if you would take this x1, x2, x1 inverse, x2 inverse, and let's say um, you would identify this symmetry, of course. So you can just say identify this one as trivial. And then those two cancel, and I get a trivial element. So the trivial loop, which is the same as the picture actually falls down. So if you would like to hang your pictures on, uh, on, on your wall, with two nails in this way, you can actually you can actually build this yourself if you want to. It's uh, always fun to do that actually. And um, yeah, and maybe from here on, it's also not so hard to see what to do with 500 nails you would use. You can always kind of find a word such as if you remove one loop, it falls apart. 500 words, nails, uh, whatever. So um, let me summarize. The fundamental group is this uh, idea of looking at loops in your space up to homotopy, which um, has a natural group structure by concatenation of paths. It's really just you walk along one path and you have another path and you just concatenate them by walking around the first one and then walking around the second one. And this is a group that you associate topological space in such a way that it is invariant under homotopy, meaning if X is homotopy equivalent to Y, then the fundamental groups are isomorphic. And you use this always in the opposite way, namely if the fundamental groups are not isomorphic, then um, your spaces are not homotopy equivalent. It's the basic example, the fundamental example of an invariant algebraic invariant, it's a group of a topological space. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.